brother, for the prayer. Thank you, brother Ozan. I appreciate that. I like this chick. You know, so I oftentimes forget to turn that thing on, and uh, you get you get ready to get caught up in a message, and you forget to push that button. So, Amen. thank you, brother, for that. Amen. Thank you for the message this morning as well. Amen. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters, for being here this morning. I know there's a lot of people that are not here this morning. And um, I'm sure that, you know, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm going to make that disclaimer right now. I'm human like everybody else. We do sometimes I fall short, you know. But, you know, we can't make something a habit because then we make it a habit. It begins, it, it begins to be second place with us. And it's, it's normal then. So it starts to be normal not to come to church even when you stop not coming for little reasons that you that you know if it's too cold outside if it's too hot you know whatever the case may be Amen. you know we stop coming to church we make every excuse that we can not to come to church and but you know for some reason monday morning we was some we're miraculously healed or whatever it is and we're going to work we're going to work because we know it's important to eat it's important for us to eat and have Money in our bank account so we can, but it's also important if you're not able to eat, if you die and you stand before the judgment seat of God, you're not able to do none of it. Amen. And if you make a mistake and, and that day is the day of your judgment and you're not here and, and God doesn't have mercy on you, you don't get in. I was walking through, I was walking through um, <clears throat> Walmart uh, last week, you know, and... You know, I was wasn't feeling too good last week. I, you know, I went out of town, and um, and uh, came back not feeling good. You know, sitting in the back of my truck getting chills. And I got home, and I, both of my family members are sick. We checked out our temperatures, and and we we medicated, and we got better. And of course, I didn't go straight to COVID because a year ago nobody went straight to COVID. We went to the flu or the cold or something like that. So that's what I did. You know, I'm not finna just walk into the fire when there's no fire. So anyway, we got better, and we're still here. Thank the Lord. But I was walking to Walmart after that, and I said, you know, I was, man, I, I was sick last week. I'm going to walk here. And uh, this lady came over, and, you know, back, they, they selling stuff, you know. And a lady came up to me, and she said, can I ask you a question? Now she was selling direct TV. I said, no, nah, I don't want to talk to you, devil, you know. She kept on walking. Well, let me ask you a question anyway. And she kept walking. I said, what church you go to? <laughs> and she started laughing. And I was like, what you laughing for? <gasps> but at this point, it wasn't funny to me. I almost died last week, you know. You know, you know, wake up feeling all bad and stuff. Body can't move, body aching. And you laughing. Mm. You know, and I kind of just slipped my tongue. I said, you're not going to be laughing when you stand before God in the judgment. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to be, I wasn't trying to be mean, but. Uh -huh. She was a real nice person. I walked back, and when I walked back this time, she was on the other side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. And another guy asked me the same question. I was like, no, no. I said, what you call him? I already asked him that question over there. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you know, at some point, you know, you. You got to try to be straight up with people. We ain't got, you ain't got time. We ain't got time to, to play around. You know, we got to tell people like it is. Like the brother said, I went on and did what I had to do. I kept on going. You know, God is good. So, Amen. it's your faith. Who are you following spiritually? Jesus or some other man? Mm. I mean, that is a question that, that we all have to ask. You know, because there are lots of men in the Bible. And there are lots of people who just can't put it together. People cannot put spirituality together no matter what. You can't do it without God giving you something called the Holy Spirit, taking your sins away from you and helping you walk right so you can grab this, you know. And so, you know, women cannot hold this position that a man can hold. They cannot, they cannot use their authority in, 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 on this day or the first day of the week in this, this atmosphere of men and women. And, sub, up, and then have authority over the crowd. Not on the day, not on the first day of the week. You can some other place. But you can't do it on this day. We got Bible to teach that. So, but we got many men in the Bible. We got many men in the Bible that we can get confused with. But the question I have now is who are you following spiritually? Jesus or some other man? Matthew 16 is where I'm going to get. I don't know if I taught this lesson or this thought. But, you know, I'm going to teach it again as if it's another part or another lesson. And I hope that you don't, you get it and that you're not offended because what I'm going to say is not my words. These are the words that are coming out of the Bible. 
These, these are Jesus' words. Even though a man is saying them, it's Jesus' words. Somebody said, well, I knew Keith when he was in high school, man. He was a joker. He was cool. He did this. He did that. But Keith is, Keith is dead. That Keith is dead. We went down. Whenever, if, you, if, you've been, if you've been baptized and you heard the gospel, that old person is supposed to be dead now. They're supposed to be dead. Look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16 and 13. Now, a simple lesson. Brother Ozan, the lesson was simple this morning. The lessons are simple because they're not difficult. It's not difficult to understand what the Bible teaches. Matthew 16 and 13. It reads, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist. Some, Elias, and others, Jeremiah, uh, one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto, unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charge he, his disciples, that they should tell no man, that he was Jesus the Christ. You know, does, does that kind of contradict what he said, what he, what he talked about to them? After he told them, he said, after I tell you this, don't tell no man that I'm Jesus the Christ. You know, don't tell nobody what it is that we just read. What we just read. And so he understood that his disciples understood who he was. And even though their faith was lacking, as we, and we, as we find out, even when they went, and, and taught on, on in Acts. Their fate was lacking. These men were men. They were human. They had infirmities in their bodies. But they went and preached. Peter stood up and preached. On that day. Peter is the one. If, if, any, if any other disciple that was there. Had more infirmities or frailties in his body. He packed a knife. He cussed. He did all the things that we see most people do today. And, but he still, God still put it in his heart to stand up and preach the gospel. Amen. And, and, and so, I mean, these men lived in a different time than we live. We can, we can only imagine, we can read, and we can study, we can dig down, but we can only imagine what was going on around them when they lived. And we see what's going on around us when we're living now. And a lot of things we don't see. And it's the things that we don't see, those things that are held in darkness that we don't see, that men parade themselves to be one thing, but behind the doors they're, they're doing a whole lot of other things. That if, if, if we knew, if we really knew about it, it would blow us away. I think it's the one thing in life that we won't tolerate. We won't tolerate any man or, or any woman putting a hand on our children. That's right. And if we knew that they were doing that, oh my goodness, it would be, it would be all out war. But they can put their hands on us spiritually. And put their hands on our children. I mean, physically, and let's not know about it. We, we hold them in high esteem. And this is what really, and my father used to say this when I, when I was young. He didn't cuss, but when he, he, used to, he used to cuss. But when he was trying to get away from cuss, he said, he really chaps my hide. Hmm. That's one of where he used to be. He really chaps my hide. I could tell when he said that. Yeah, my dad, when he said something, I, 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 know, I knew when he, was, when he was mad. And I didn't mess with him. because He said that right there. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna bite his little, his bottom tongue when he said that. And so you know, you you understand when you know when somebody is serious about something. So so I'm saying that to say this: there are many men in the Bible that we know of, and some people in the world cannot put this together. You could you could you could say that they think that Jesus Christ was Noah or Abram, you know, or, or, or Abraham. And I've got, I got a little piece of my lesson that talks about all of them as well. But look at Matthew 6. 
we got to understand we got to have faith. We got to have faith in God. And we know the definition of faith. We found it in Hebrews 11 and 1. It, 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 it's, faith is believing something that you, you can't see. It's, it's, it's having hope in something that you can't see. And so our faith, if our faith is in Jesus, you know, do we have faith? Do we have faith? I remember it's something I, just, uh, Jesus told the disciples. We're going to read about it in a little bit. I'm, but I want to know, I want us to examine, because it's examination every time we come forward. is to examine ourselves. It's to examine ourselves. And to balance our lives. We got husbands, we got wives, we got children. Right? There's a balance. There also is a, um, a, a, a friction or hostility between those two sometimes. And then when it's not a balance, then someone has to bring the, that, that relationship into balance. Amen. And then there's also somebody in the, in the relationship that got to say no. Yes. Because Adam didn't, Adam didn't say no. That's right. Adam just went along, with the, he just went along with the program. Went along with the program. Look at Matthew 6, 3 and 4. Sometimes you might be saying, you might be wondering, why is he saying what well, I'm going to Matthew 6 and 24 says, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. Two, you cannot serve God and mammon. God and, God, and, God and money. God and mammon. You know, um, um, we have to understand that we can't serve God and government. Amen. I put it that way. God and government. Because you know there's an article. There's an article on Google. And I don't I don't trust I don't I start I, I stopped saying Google because there's so many others. I stopped giving them the, the credit. There's on there's an article on the internet. You can use DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is better than Google. They they don't they don't follow you around after you search on them. But listen to this right here. I mean this is this is literally on, on, on the internet. See, the devil is open now. He's not hiding anymore. Amen. He's not. He's all open. Satan's temple challenges Texas abortion restrictions for its members claiming religious exemption. Mm. The Satan's temple wants to abort babies back further in the, in the trimester as they go get older in the womb. Mm. That's what they want to do. In that church, it says Satan's temple. It says that here. Let me put it right here. I see it right here. Satan's temple. You're not gonna see this on ABC or CBS. You know, I'm not gonna show this. So, you know, it's, on, it's, on, it's right here. Satan's temple. Want to take a child and abort a child in not the first trimester, the second trimester, down even closer when the baby's, you know, baby, no, the baby's alive when he's conceived. Why would you want to kill a child? Why? It says, I said, why do you want to kill the babies? Martin said, I love the babies. Mm -hmm. you, love, you love your babies too. You love your... your, your. See, when I, when I see stuff like this, I think about little children. I think about my granddaughter. I think about my oldest daughter. Because she's going to have children one day. My other daughter is going to have children. This is what I think about. This goes back to loving our neighbor. Because this right the chaps my hide right here. So because I don't see since I don't see it nowhere else, since I don't see it in the news, this is the news for us. I see it right here because you may not ever see it because they're not going. They're going to talk about COVID this, COVID that, COVID this, COVID that, PCR test, antigen test. Ah, you know, you know, it's it's crazy. This is what this is what they're going to talk about. This is what they're going to talk about. There is a man. There is a man that works at Pfizer. I don't know. His, I don't know his real his last name. He works at Pfizer, but he sits on the board of Reuters. Reuters is the news magazine. Now, what he does when somebody says something against Pfizer, he sits on the board at Reuters. It's a magazine, online magazine called Reuters. He says that what they said wasn't true, and they publish it at Reuters. He sits on he sits on the board of he works for Pfizer. No, what? is this world retarded? They don't see that on the news either. You see what I'm saying? Who do we serve when we let, when we let people motivate us to make decisions? Because our decisions are motivated by what we see and what we hear. And so, I'm not downplaying anything. I'm not, 
anti this or anti that, but I'm saying that yeah. that right there is kind of suspicious to me. It really is. You're not saying it on ABC. That's why, you know, my wife told me this morning, I walked outside, it was cool. And she said, well, you got to listen to the news sometime, at least the weather. You're right. We used to have a weather channel. It would cost too much to have it. I just go to the weather channel. I don't even want to see the rest of the news they got to talk about. I got to find that out myself on my own. So anyway, who are we serving? We serve two masters or just one? We know who has all authority. We know, we know who sits above the earth on high in heaven. We know that. Look at Matthew 28. He doesn't say, Christ doesn't say I have some authority. He has power. Even when we look at the old times, when we look at the times of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. He had power according to Romans 13. Didn't he? Didn't Nebuchadnezzar have power according to Romans 13? We're supposed to obey all power. Authority, those in authority. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to make sure we obey them. But when Nebuchadnezzar made a bunk law to make everybody bow down when he heard music, it was a reaction. The herald says, Bow down when you hear the, the south back, blah, 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 blah. Why well, do you bow down? And those three boys who didn't do it, guess what? House arrest. We're going to put them in confinement. Yeah, you know, in some countries, they're putting people. They're, put, they're putting people in camps because they haven't had a shot and charging them $4,000. No, they ain't got $4,000 because they're at home. They didn't, they didn't shut the, the, the world down. In that place, I think it's in Germany or it's in Europe. Germany is in Europe. They charge them $4,000 and they put them in, in camps. I bet they ain't on 13. I bet it's not. Because it's, it's, it's at a theater coming to you, near you. <laughs> it's coming to you when, when then when you see it, all this commotion, people fighting on planes like Brother Javier, like Kevin said, fighting on planes because somebody took their mask down. Aren't you allowed to breathe? Aren't you allowed to eat? My God, don't don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't make the people don't, don't let these people make you afraid and make you faithless. I'm gonna show we're gonna look at this right here. So Matthew 28, Jesus said, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Unto me. Now that's what Jesus said. He said unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. This is what we could this is what we should be doing. Through all the stuff that's going on, we just should be doing it. Teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. End of the world. This is what Jesus is mandating to us. Go and teach. Go and teach. Well, you know what? COVID is getting in the way of that. Don't worry about that. Just go and teach. Go and teach. Look at Mark 7. This is what interests me. We talk about, we talk about this song that we have. And the song that we, we sing. We don't sing it that much now because it's not in our book. Uh. What's the name of that song? It's in the last page of the old book we used to have. Our God is Alive. Man, I wish we could. We need to take. We need to take and copy that and paste it in the back. You know, in the back of that book, because we've been singing it in, in a while. Is God still alive? If He's still alive, He's still in control. He's still in control. Look at Matthew seven. These Pharisees try to dictate to the disciples. They try to dictate to the disciples. How to eat. And what to do before you eat. In this chapter. And God said, now I got it under control. We're going to read it. We're going to read most of this chapter right here to get this out. Mark 7. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they, they saw some of the disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Fault. Well, you know what? You know what? Some people eat with unwashing hands. I'm sometimes in the. I don't want to see no. If I go to a restaurant, I see the cook in the bathroom, and he go back in the kitchen. I'm not gonna eat there. I just bought him. I'm not. He should be washing his hands. He work in the kitchen. You know they got some people on side. Some people outside there. You know hobos. They eat with unwashing hands all the time because they're on the street. 
using needles, having sex with people, all kinds of things. But you know what? I've never seen them on TV I'm talking about it's a, it's, a, it's a pandemic out there. It's a pandemic. <clears throat> Verse 3 says, For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. Oh, what you, those are, they, these are sort of a government right here. Eating, they cleaning their hands, they washing their hands. And this is what everybody's supposed to follow them. Everybody's supposed to follow them. Not disciples, not Christ's old nasty disciples, not these old nasty apostles in Christ, he said. And when, it says, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. These other things they need to wash and keep them clean. Keep them clean. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked, asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? Just like the FDA telling you to, you got to wash your hands three times a day and you got to wash them for 20 minutes. And you show you how to wash them like this here. You ever go to the bathroom and see somebody throwing that lather up, washing them hands, getting them dirty. This is like them, making rules. She answered and said unto them, Well has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Howbeit, in vain do they worship me, teaching from the, the, the doctrine of commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things, such like, such like things you do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curse his father and mo mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. The Bible says, and ye suffer him no more to, you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Making the whole, making the word of God non effect through your traditions, which ye have delivered, and many such things, such like things you do. Now I want to touch on this this part here for a moment. I want to touch on this part here for a moment. Look at Malachi. Honor your father and your mother. Honoring God is like honoring your father and your mother. Look at Malachi. Look at Malachi. Now I want to stop there because, I mean, it's important to under, for us to understand if we want to honor God, if we want to honor God, we have to honor mother and father. And we have to keep God's commandments. That's, that's honoring Him. See, when we, honor, when, we, when we keep God's commandments, we honor, we show by implication we're honoring God. And when we take care of our mother and father physically, we're showing that we honor them. There's really no difference is that God is in heaven, our, our, our mother and our fathers are here still, maybe not, maybe they're going on. But we realize that we still miss them, but they're not here anymore. If they are here, we still should honor them. Look at Matthew, look at Malachi, Malachi 1. The burdens of the word of the Lord to Israel by, by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord. Ye say, wherein has thou loved loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. He's saying a lot right there. He's saying a lot right there. The same Jacob, Israel is asking him the question is saying, you know, how how do you love us? He said, Did not didn't you have didn't Jacob have a brother? And they understood that Jacob had a brother's name was Esau. He said, I love Jacob, I love you, not Esau. He says, 
It says, Wherefore Eden said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Now, Edom, Edom is, is, is Esau. He says, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Thou shalt build, but I will throw down, and they shall so call them the borders of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. They're saying, you know what? Eden, Esau saying, you know, we're going to build anyway. God said, I'm going to tear it down because I, didn't, I hate you. I don't love you like I love Jacob. You build it, but I'm going to tear it down, he says. So he has indignation forever. He says, verse 5 said, And the eyes shall see, and you shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the borders of Israel. God is putting, this is, this is to the priest. And God is saying that I'm, I'm going to be magnified. Because these priests right here were offering uh, uh, sacrifices that were unqualified. Lame, broken, blind sacrifices to the Lord. Saying his, his holy temple was contempted. See, when we, when we offer something to God, that's not what he said to do. Then we're in contempt. Then we're not honoring God. When a woman stands up here and preaches, when well, she's not honoring God. When we come, when we go to worship service on Sunday and we say we're giving that to God, I mean on Saturday, and we're giving that to God, God is not accepting that sacrifice. That's not honoring God because we don't. We're here on, on Saturday. No. When we have musical instruments clanging and banging in here, and we don't have any, we don't have any proof of it in the New Testament. We're not honoring God. We're honoring some other man. We don't know who Jesus is. We don't. We don't. We don't. When we when we start to tithe instead of give, we're not honoring God. Now we're just talking about worship. When we don't use these sacraments, we don't use uh, fruit of the vine and unleavened bread. When we start using rainbow bread and in uh, water, not watered down, but you know, hydrogen, whatever you want, whatever kind of other juice besides grape juice. Peach, apple, watermelon. God's not accepting it. Not accept. We're not honoring God. We're not honoring God anymore. You know, and so now that's just worship. Now let's go home, you know, and live. You got a girlfriend, you got a boyfriend, you're married. You're not honoring God. You're still drinking seven days a week after work, going to the club, you're not honoring God. We're not honoring God. So, there's a difference. Honoring our father and our mother means to to, to have a love for them. It's not a love like you have for your wife. But I, I read this word, filio. Filio love. I, I read this word. I saw this word somewhere in the text. And I believe it was in here. It was a side note. Filio honor. I looked the word up. It's filio love. The love of the child for a parent. A type of love. A strong, positive emotion of regards of affection. I heard a man say, I heard a man think, I think it was Shaq O'Neal. I think it was Shaq O'Neal. And this is a this is a, you know, a straight up, you know, he's a Gentile, rich, but very famous, one of one of his likable guys. A lot of people like him. Mm -hmm. I like him. I like to hear him talk. What he did, what Shaq did, you know, and what many what many, you know, athletes do. They have they have fathers and they got mothers, but you never hear about the father. When they when they when they go up there and they get that when they get drafted they go up there they thank mom. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mom. Mm -hmm. But daddy just in the side. He's in the back. You know he knows that he's had something to do with it. But the first thing they said they want to do I'm gonna build my mom a house. Or my mommy because what she did for me. Mm -hmm. If you can't if you can't go see your mom and your other half in your household. Has a problem with it? Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have a problem with her. You should go see your mom. You should make it possible. You go see your mom. And if she becomes a problem, you just go see your mom. You don't have to know you want to see your mom. You go take care of your mom. You go take care of your your father. You go take care of them. You, whatever kind of means you have to keep peace in your house. So long as your house ain't lacking. If your house falling down, and you going over there now? Okay, my wife, let me talk, baby. Your house falling down now. You going to tell your mama how to do it. Your wife not, man. You know, your house not falling down. 
And you got everything you need. Go see your mom. Go take care of your mom, your parents. Amen. That's honoring your father and your mother. That's right. Because some people ain't gonna let you come to church. You going that back? You going that Christ Church Christ again? Yeah. Well, I forbid it when I'm going. See the difference? I gotta go to church. I gotta go see my mom. Same thing. That person got to deal with God. That's right. So honor, honor. So, so Christ is saying, God is saying right here. Eden, you're going to build all you want to, but I, I, I love Jacob. You are hated, but whatever you build, I'm going to tear it down. Sure. People are going to still build stuff, but God said they going to let it last. God's still going to let you have joy. He's going to let the rain fall down on you, but sooner or later, that house is going to fall because you're not in the right relationship with the Lord. Verse 5 says, And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the borders of Israel. Verse 6 says, A son honored his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Mm. Said the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? So wicked, so wicked, just like this generation now, not to even know. That I'm offering, or you, or you know you're offering these lame and these, these blind sacrifices to the Lord, and you think it's okay. So blind, can't even see. Who are you serving? We are supposed, we, we're supposed to know that. We're supposed to know we're serving Christ. You say, you offer polluted bread upon my, my altar. You say, wherein have I, have we polluted thee? In that ye say. The table of the Lord is contemptible. Polluted bread. Whether it was a wrong kind of bread, whether it was made with leaven instead of unleavened, whatever the case might be, it was polluted. And they knew, they knew what to offer. I know they had enough salt, they had enough flour. I know the Levites were still giving them money. I mean, I mean the rest of the, the tribe was still helping the Levites, still, still supplying them with treasure. To the, to the treasury so they could still buy things they needed. They had plenty of animals. Some of us don't have any animals. They had plenty of animals. They could get the, 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 the best, fattest lamb or cow or dove, whatever it was, and bring and sacrifice it, but they didn't. They kept that back for themselves. Obviously. Obviously. Verse 8 said, And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Of it now unto thy governor, will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person? Said the Lord of hosts. You know that that's now I said government first, didn't I? So I said government. So I'm a, I'm a full right to say government and and Bible because it is right here. Talk about government. Do you honor government over Christ? You know what I'm saying? Do you listen to them more? You listen to Christ. Christ said, "I got the germ in my hand." You know, I, I don't have anything. I don't have anything against, you know, what's going on. But I can see the difference in my eye, and I'm nobody. I'm just, a, I'm just an observer. That I'm just observing, you know. But I can see the difference in myself and others. And I use myself. I'm, like, I'm an experiment. I'm a walking. You're a walking experiment. I'm a walking experiment. I don't wear masks. I'm a walking experiment. I'm not dead yet because I know for a fact. There is no peer review studies to say that they're safe. Peer review studies always come across. Every phantom of study first. There is none. None. There's none. When I go get my, my medicine, my, my uh, medicine for high blood pressure, they always give me that paper. I'm saying, this, that, that, and that. This is what you got to watch out for. Always. I don't see that attached to anything else. And... Well, I understand, I understand. I've been getting educated on how government works. Government mandates mean that, that they're mandating something. It's, it's purely something that is something that is a suggestion. Congress is the only one who can make a mandate. They have to make a law. Then when they make a law and say, you got to wear a mask, then you know, I do. Because Congress, Congress works for us, the people. You see what I'm saying? So mandates are just mandates. And a company can mandate something, but you don't have to listen to the company. But you got to keep your job, so I understand that. You don't have to. Your sacrifice can get you another one. You see, so that's what I'm just saying. That's just knowledge. Somebody may not like it, but that's knowledge. That's just the way it is. 
It is. That's the way it is. So who are we? Who are we? Who are we following? Are we honoring our Father or are we honoring man? Mm. Are we honoring man? God is um, God is serious about honoring that father and that mother. Amen. He talks about it in the Old Testament. You can write these down as we get ready to close. Acts twenty and twelve. Acts twenty and twelve. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. Well, I'm gonna read some of them until we have time. I'm gonna read some of them. He's he's serious about this because he he says it many times, and in the Old Testament we see it over and over again. Exodus twenty and verse number twelve says. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He says, honor them. Honor them. He says, honor them. Look at, look at Leviticus 19. The Old Testament. The Old Testament. And then he says in the New Testament, just to cap it off, he goes to the New Testament, he says, honor them. Because God is serious about his honor. He wants, to, he wants you to understand Practice this while you're on earth. Honor your father and your mother. And I'm not talking to those who are gone. When father and mothers are gone on. You honor them. They're gone on now. You honor them in their, in their life. Then you honor them in their death. Because you gave them a burial. A proper burial. You gather the family. I went to the funeral. 19. Some people don't like this. Some people don't like this. Well, you don't have to like me. You know. You don't. I don't have but one friend left. You know, I was going to school. I had a lot of friends. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was the kind of guy you wanted to hang around for fun. You know, like, I like to do stuff. I had a bunch of friends. Now I got, I got one. I got maybe one that I go to high school with that I still talk to. That I still talk to. And that's what I try to encourage. You know, uh, uh, people in marriage or whatever. You're not gonna have them friends when you came out of high school. How many friends you still have when you was in high school that you still talk to? You know, you got your wife or your husband. That's the one you came out with. That's the one you're supposed to be keeping. There may be one or two that just going to hang around. Look at uh, 19 and 3. Uh, I think it's 19 and 3. Levitical 19 and 3. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father. And keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. He said fear. He said fear. Same thing God wants to do. He wants us to fear him. And keep his commandments. You know, you got you got people nowadays. They don't fear parents because they they may just have one parent. They may be the mother. They don't fear. They don't mother. Many kids don't fear the mother. Cuss in front of them, disrespect them, call them all kinds of names. Guess, guess what? You're not gonna live long. You're not gonna live long. Mm -hmm. I I heard Bernie Mac. He dead now, and but I seen him on one of the YouTube things, and it was going around, and and he was saying some stuff about his mother. How he was cussing when he was little. You're using the M, M, M word, MF word and stuff. And uh, I don't know if he really did it when he was alive or said those things when he was alive, but he's not alive no more. Mm. So, Deuteronomy 27, 27, 16. Deuteronomy 27, 16. There's a lot of scripture in here about, there's a lot of scripture in here about honoring that father and that mother. I'm telling you right now, God is not playing around 27 and 16. I've got a brother right now. He won't even call my mother. Won't even go see her. He won't call. He won't call us. So. Still pray for him and hope he comes around. You know, I haven't seen him in years. Asked my mother, have you seen him? Have you talked to you? Have you called? She said, No, he didn't call us. Okay. Curse be he that set it light by his father or his mother, and all the people say Amen. There's a lot of curses in this chapter right here. A lot of curses. Proverbs 13, 17, Matthew 15 and 4. We will read all those, those, those scriptures. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going to stop right here. Who are you serving? Who are you serving? You know, we got to understand who is who. You know, who is who? You know, God, uh, I heard, I seen, I saw, I saw a, a video with a Muslim asked this preacher guy on a, on a YouTube, um, and this is something you should think about. How is it that God can be a man and God at the same time? Jesus. Jesus. They have a big problem with that. Mm -hmm. How can God be a man and be called God at the same time? Is he God or is he a man? Let me ask you, I asked the same person to them. Are you a God or are you a man? Mm. 
<laughs> Bible mm-hmm. says that you, you call yourself God in the Bible. He uses the same scripture. But sometimes you just got to learn how to flip, flip stuff around through trying to get in anguish. And we just got to ask him, are you, are you a man? Mm-hmm. Are you a God with the little, with the little, with the little old, O.D.? With the little G.O.D.? What can they say? What can they say? <laughs> He's the son of God. He's the son of God. That's all it is to it. You don't get all difficult and try to go into these deep debates, man. The Bible is what it says. It is. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. It is, man. You know, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna lose our soul trying to think think above how God thinks. Mm. We're gonna lose our soul. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one scripture I want to look at right quickly. I think it's Matthew 19. I'm sorry, I'm gonna look at it right fast. 19. 19. Nineteen and verse number twenty-six. Look at twenty-three, Matthew nineteen twenty-three. It says, "Then said Jesus unto the disciple, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle." Then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? He said. But Jesus behold them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto them, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have? Therefore, I'm not going to read all of it, but my point was, is that with man things are impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. Who is God? God is in heaven, but his son came down and lived among us, the son of God. Philip called him my Lord and my God in John the 20th chapter. Here's what he called it. We called it. So, so who is he? The son of God? He said he was equal with God in the, in the book of Philippians. They tried to set him on fire, hang him for that reason. He was equal to God. You're going to argue with the Bible? He's God in the flesh. He's our Lord, but he's not God the Father. So, so, so in, in saying that, you know, uh, faith is the substance of things that you don't see. It's the things that hope for. You want, you want to see heaven? You can't see it. But you got to get into heaven. You want to get into heaven. You got to get in how Christ said to do it, and not how Noah, it's not how Adam, or not how Abram before he was Abraham. You can't make a God didn't make a covenant with you. It was between Abraham and Abram. They changed his name. God made a covenant with Noah. Noah built an ark. God told Adam to do something, but he didn't do it. You gonna try? You go back and try to do any of those things. You're gonna fail. Because you're not Adam, and you're not Noah, and you're not Abraham. You know, you're not Moses, you're not Elias, you're not Jeremiah, one of the prophets. We're just men. We're just men and women. We're just trying to survive, and we're trying to make it. So, therefore, in order for us to, to receive the prize, we must obey the gospel. We must obey the gospel. And we, we understand it in Matthew, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Once we understand what the gospel is, we must believe it. Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Belief, confession, repentance is necessary that once we hear this message of the gospel, we must repent. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Lay, nay, let you repent. You shall all likewise pray. We've got to perish. This message is different from any other group A message. We got some. We got some tracks out there. The one true church, and inside that track, we got a whole group of people that started their own religion. Well, they may not have started directly, but indirectly it was started, and they were given credit for starting those religions. None. This doesn't fall into any of those categories. What we're talking about now. Confession is made. Confession is made because the eunuch confessed that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Even after he came from worship, thinking he was already all right. Philip took him down and baptized him, and they both came up out of water rejoicing. Philip went one way, we went one way, and the eunuch went the other way. 
Guess what? His sins were removed, Acts 2 and 38, in that water. They were removed. He was added to the church, as in the Bible, that only Christ could add him to, Revelation 1 and 5. Christ is the only one who knows where his blood is. None of us know where it is. We don't even know where his body is buried at. He's in heaven, on the right hand of the Father, dipping spiritual souls in his blood. It don't get any better than that. I don't, I don't, you can be added to that church, the one that he came and died for up on the cross. You can be added to it. It still exists. We started out talking about that in the book of uh, Matthew, the 13th chapter. All the way down to 16, 18, all up in there. So, uh, that is the message. We hope and pray that it's simple enough and it's not anything difficult to understand. We just hope and pray that you would have faith. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not the word of Keith. Anybody, anybody today think it was the word of Keith, please say, let, let me know now so we can make sure we correct it. So God is good. If, if nothing else, then we're going to um, uh, ask a brother to, to. Yes, sister, you got a question? Uh, uh, before Matthew 19 and 13, what was the other business? Matthew 16 and. Matthew 19? Before that. Uh, you, you said Proverbs something? Oh, yeah, okay, Proverbs uh, 30 and 17. 30 and 17? In Matthew 15 and 14. I mean, 15 and 4. 15 and 4, okay. Thank yeah, you're welcome. That's the message. Um, God bless you.